Hi, I am Dr. Eddie Inc. I am a retired dentist living in Australia. As a dentist, it was part of my duty to recognize and refer cases of suspected sleep apnea because there are oral signs and symptoms. About 90% of the cases that I referred turned out to be positive. Subsequent to a positive diagnosis, I had to either treat the patient with oral appliances or support the patient with regards to dental complications associated with CPAP treatment. Sleep apnea is an insidious disease more common than most people think and it is hereditary. You probably have friends or relative afflicted by the condition. Worldwide, there are about 400 million people with sleep apnea. There are two types of sleep apnea. Central apnea is the less common and more serious of the two. It is where the brain fails to initiate breathing signals during sleep. The more common is obstructive apnea where breathing is obstructed by the tongue blocking the airway due to relaxation of the throat muscles. Sometimes there are a bit of both. If left untreated sleep apnea can potentially shorten the life of the patient by as much as 10 years because it is often associated with cardiac arrhythmia and stroke. Furthermore, the daytime drowsiness can contribute to car accidents. Who knows, the lack of oxygen in the brain may affect cognitive functions as well. People who are overweight and have short necks are prone to develop sleep apnea. Their spouses often report that the victim snores and falls asleep while watching television. Well, libido may also be ebbing. CPAP treatment, short form of continuous positive air pressure is the state-of-the-art treatment for sleep apnea. The CPAP machines are very sophisticated nowadays. The RAM function starts the pressure at about 6 cm H2O. As the patient has apnea episodes, the machine automatically rams up the pressure to 11 to 14 depending on the needs. The water tank that provides added humidity is heated and the interface silicone masks are discreet and comfortable. The modern CPAP machines are a far cry from the early ones which were noisy and freezing cold. I developed sleep apnea about 10 years ago. I was admitted to a sleep center in a hospital, wired up and left to sleep. The machine was noisy and cold. Next to the room was the driveway with cars zooming up and down the whole night. I could hardly concentrate let alone sleep. Nonetheless, the technician said I did sleep for an hour and a half and captured enough data for a diagnosis. Nowadays, the process is much more user-friendly. Quite often, the patient is given a machine to take home. It is much easier to manage in a familiar environment with the comfort of your own bed. Anyway, come the day to see the sleep specialist. He said, Eddie, I am sorry to let you know you have sleep apnea of medium severity. You had 15 episodes per hour and require treatment. You have a choice of an oral appliance called mandibular advancement designed to lock your bottom jaw forward in order to prevent the tongue from falling down your throat. Or you can choose a CPAP. It is more effective than the oral appliance. If you like, you can hire a CPAP for a month before committing to it, it is quite expensive. Before the doctor finished, I told him to give me the prescription for a CPAP because I wanted to buy one. I told him buying one outright would make me more resolute in using it. Eddie, he said, I like your attitude. The machines were rather expensive in Australia initially. Three to four thousand dollars was quoted. I knew they were about a thousand in the States. I rang my son who works for Microsoft in Seattle to buy one for me and at length to explain what CPAP was. 
My son interrupted and said, Dad, you don't have to tell me what a CPAP is, I am using one. I was staggered, so what they say about the heredity nature of sleep apnea must be true. My son was in his 30s then. We met in Tokyo for a family reunion and took delivery of the CPAP at the same time. That marked the beginning of my journey with CPAP. It didn't take long for me to get used to the machine. On the third night I slept 8 hours. It was like I closed my eyes at night and when I opened them I saw daylight. No counting of sheeps jumping over the fence and no dreaming at all. Actually, my first-hand experience with CPAP became very handy in helping my own patients at my dental clinic. For example, if they have blood nose, I could tell them to use medical grade sesame oil nasal spray. If they have dry mouth, things would improve if they set the water tank temperature higher to 27 degrees centigrade. In winter, the water vapor may condense in the tubing and rain down onto the patient's face. Worse still, the condensate may pool in the valley of the tube and make a gurgling sound. The solution is to buy an insulation jacket for the tube. I would also impress on the patient to wash the mask and the tubings frequently. Otherwise, fungus and bacteria infestation would impact on the health of the respiratory system. To clean, use a fragrance-free detergent. A strong perfume smell is not inducive to good sleep. At one stage, I was tempted to buy an ozone generator for disinfection. However, I was concerned with the lack of FDA clearance. I stayed with detergent. For patients with gastric reflux, a chewable mylanta is the answer. At least, don't eat three hours before bed. In other words, sleep with an empty stomach, don't want any risk of acid vapor forced into the lungs. Due to the tendency to have a dry mouth, oral hygiene and decay prevention must be stepped up. The patients were advised to use GC mousse, a wonderful topical decay prevention paste that can neutralize acidity down to a pH of 2. Fluoride mouthwash, even though of some help can only work down to a pH of 4. By the way, I don't have any financial interest in GC mousse. The company is not sponsoring this video. More recently, my baby sister complained that she had been waking up every two to three hours and the bladder would be full. I knew she could be having sleep apnea because her neck is short. Sure enough she was diagnosed as positive. I am happy to report that she is sleeping well now and can look forward to a longer and healthier life ahead. Soon after, I convinced my singing partner in Hong Kong to take a test. Her case could have been easily missed because she does not have a short neck but she had all the other signs and symptoms. All in all, if in doubt, go for the test. It is non-invasive and you have nothing to lose. Thank you for watching. I welcome questions, please ask in the comment section. This presentation is part of my lifestyle channel hosting music, health, horticulture, and cooking. My channel is not a poor Sibley. Your subscription and sharing would be much appreciated. Thank you and see you next time.